Hi, uh, my name is Alexander Azimov. I'm from uh, Yandex. And I hope that everybody that is interested in uh, BGP security have got back to the room. Uh, we'll not wait for uh, any other people. So, uh, speaking about BGP security. For years, there were predictions that BGP can be used for, uh, with malicious intent. BGP can be used to intercept your traffic. Unfortunately, uh, during recent, uh, previous years, this forecast uh, came true, and there were already several successful at attacks on financial organizations. We do not know the number, the exact number, because there are some public information, there is some private information, uh, and uh, some financial org organizations are not going to share that uh, they were hijacked or their, uh, the data f of their customers was leaked. So, uh, what do we have to fight the intruder? So, here is the example. Uh, there was a network that for years was constantly hijacking address space from uh, other parties. And a year ago, this activity was finally reported at Nanok mailing list. And in a month, this network was fully uh, disconnected from all its upstream providers from iAccess. So, when the community showed its power, it was able to disconnect the attacker. But does it really scale? Imagine that we will have not one attacker, but two attacks, three or four, or maybe 100 attackers uh, 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 simultaneously. And by the way, ex uh, this attack was not smart at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to discuss with you different options that we have to, uh, to fight attackers from the technical side. So I will be uh, uh, listing uh, these options one by one. Some of them uh, are common, some of them are new one, and uh, some of them can even resemble one each other. So let's start with the first one, which is, uh, should be familiar, uh, 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 that you should be familiar with. It's of course IRR filters. IRR filters is a way to translate I sets into a list of prefixes that you m should apply at your links with customers. So it's uh, uh, just a prefix list, some kind of prefix tree, and it's quite useful. So let's see how it's working. This very simple topology, I will use it during all the slides. So, and I will spend a, a couple of seconds in detailed description of what is going on. So here it is, out on system one, which, uh, which takes IP transit from out on system two. Uh, Auton System 2 and 4 both take transit from Auton S System 3. And during the slides, Auton System, one will, uh, Auton system 4 will try its best to hijack address space that belongs to Auton System 1. So, uh, in a simple situation, when there is a root object that belongs to Auton System 1 and Auton System 4 will try to advertise prefix that belongs to Auton System 1, uh, Auto system three will be able to detect it because there will be no match with IR filters that are, should be applied between uh, four and three. Unfortunately, there are a lot of ways to bypass IR filters. There is a number of uh, databases that are uh, uh, where you can create root objects without any authorization. You can uh, add uh, any uh, any out uh, system in your I set, and there is never authorization. You can even add Google I set or um, I set level three, and it will be okay. So there is, a, there is no problem to bypass IR filters, and most of them are already outdated. So what other options do we have? So just to summarize, IR filters are useful. They can stop some mistakes. They will help you to secure your network, but they are not suitable to fight malicious activity. And uh, if I imagine about a bicycle that represents IR filters, I will think something uh, like this. <laughs> it's hard, it's old, but we, uh, we have to use it, we have to ride it. And uh, we, uh, uh, let's discuss what other options do we have. So the next one is raw validation procedure. So I'm not going to discuss API infrastructure. Uh, in simplified manner, we can think about 
as uh, RPKI is a uh, distributed database of signed objects where you can easily get cache to use it locally. So how does it work? There is a row validation procedure. Uh, it takes prefix and first auto system number in the ice path. And it takes uh, candidates rows uh, where there's a prefix uh, overlap with uh, prefix from the root. And if uh, the uh, candidates list is not, uh, is not uh, empty, um, then it checks so that there is an overlap between list of autonomous system numbers and the autonomous system number in the beginning of the ice path. If uh, there is an overlap, the outcome is valid. If there is uh, no overlap, the outcome is invalid. So it's quite simple. So how does it work? How does it help the user? Again, let's imagine that I take a have already bypassed IRR filters. But now, if it will try to uh, advertise prefix from its own autonomous system number, it will be filtered because the prefix, uh, the outcome of raw validation procedure will be invalid. Unfortunately, it's not enough to stop the attacker because uh, it can add autonomous system one in the beginning of the ice path. And with this, uh, autonomous system three will be forced to accept this prefix. So speaking about roles, Again, roles are very useful. They can be uh, uh, role validation procedure can be applied not only on customer links, but also uh, at links with providers, peers. So it's uh, reach uh, provides you uh, much more functionality compared to IR filters. But without IcePath uh, uh, verification or validation, it can't be used to stop malicious activity. Uh, and again, Bicycle for uh, rows, we have half of it, of it. And we need an opportunity to uh, verify what is, uh, uh, what is in the ice path. And to solve this part of the problem, it was supposed that this part of the problem uh, uh, will be covered with BGPSEC. BGPSEC is a quite new protocol. Uh, it's uh, one and a half year old. Uh, it but already it has a long history and tons of do documentation. Uh, it's one way we call it even a new version of BGP because it has uh, significant changes in the uh, uh, message specification, in the ice path representation, and so on. So the basic idea of BGPSEC was that the sender signs direction, direction in which a prefix is sent. And so in this case, uh, attacker is able to replay ice path, but can't get inside. So again, we'll get back to the example. Once again, if uh, uh, on system four will just uh, ad ad advertise address space of out on system one from its own out on system, it will be detected using rows. If it will uh, then try to create a uh, a signed signature, it will be uh, invalid. So, does BGPSEC solve our problems? Unfortunately, not. Because the problem is backward compatibility. As I was telling you, BGPSEC is nearly new protocol. It should provide backward compatibility for old style BGP. And to bypass BGPSEC, the attacker needs only one thing do not use BGPSEC. So, uh, rather easy for, for, from the attacker side. And the, the other problem of BGPSEC is deployment. It has great computational overhead and so um, increment, uh, without incremental deployment and so it's bringing you a lot of expenses and it gives very little back. And if you ask again, comparing protocols with bicycles, it will be something like this. It has fantastic design, but uh, brings you uh, 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 nothing than additional complexity. So, something strange with timer, the time saying for, okay, no, uh, never mind. Uh, let's speak about another uh, uh, mechanism that was before a uh, uh, competitor of BGPSEC and even was introduced before RPKI. 
So it was called Seoul BGP. Uh, so BGP uh, was suggesting to use instead of strong cryptographic, cryptographic uh, validation, verification uh, using external database. So uh, ISPs were supposed to say, uh, to, to list uh, I, uh, other ISPs that they are connected with. If, and, uh, if there is uh, both, can, uh, both uh, audit pairs uh, exist, uh, the pair is trustable. If only one pair exists, the pair is not invalid. It's just less trustable. So the result is that uh, so BGP was pro not providing a solution that uh, gives clear statement, invalid or valid. It was providing a function. Function that uh, at a high adoption rate may be useful. But uh, again, it can easily be used by attackers, especially at state of early adoption. Another problem is IXS. IXS prefer to say they are not, that they are not participating in routing. This position is arguable, but it happens, unfortunately. Uh, and transparent IXS are not adding their autonomous system a number in the path. So uh, with uh, these ind indirect uh, uh, agencies, there is uh, impossible to create such a database. And uh, there is another option for attackers. So, as a result, so BGP uh, is a function. It's uh, capable to detect uh, uh, bogan routes, but it's not capable to detect root leaks or is not capable to provide a general solution to verify IS path. And behind all its disadvantages, um, so BGP had at least one bright idea, verification which is done outside of BGP protocol itself is uh, uh, much, uh, uh, is less costly than uh, uh, cryptographic validation. And so, anyway, we are here. At the moment, there is no mechanism uh, that can save us from malicious activity. There are several uh, uh, mechanisms that are designed to detect mistakes and nothing to detect uh, 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 hacker activity. So, but we should uh, accept it and move forward. Move forward to a new BGP extension, new BGP solution, which, which will finally solve our goals. Because otherwise, we will be doomed to fight attackers using mailing list. I don't think this is acceptable for the community. So, let's specify the goals because uh, properly specified goals may bring us a solution. Uh, we need to stop propagation of malicious hijacks and root leaks. We need to uh, uh, gather both situations. Uh, this, uh, the, the technique should support incremental deployment. It should be lightweight. It should not, uh, should not require significant updates in the BGP protocol itself. And of course, it, sh and sh it should provide automatic, fully automatic solution. So, let's speak about how anomalies are propagating. Is there any difference between propagating normal prefix or hijack prefix? Of course not. It propagates to upstream providers, to peers, and then to downstreams. And if we will be able to detect uh, this propagation at the level of links between customer and providers and peers, we are done. So, we can simplify the work instead of uh, 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 making goal to uh, verify all ice paths in the world. It's enough to verify ice paths for prefixes that are received from customers and peers. And there is another beautiful note for this. Uh, for prefixes that are received from customers and peers, all pairs of uh, different auto system numbers in the path must be customer and pro uh, to provide. So what we need is a distri distributed database of signed objects that will say that this is my providers. And here we're getting to APK again. So what we are suggesting is a, a new APK object that will uh, give ISPs an opportunity to list their providers. With this object, it will, be, uh, it will enable other ISPs to detect uh, a hacker activity. For, uh, uh, for the address space. 
So here is an, an example. So there is a customer autonomous uh, system that uh, uh, signs who is uh, uh, its provider. The, pay of, uh, the verification uh, procedure is very similar to role uh, uh, verification. So again, we are separating, uh, we are splitting I spot into pairs where, where prepend values are ignored. After that, uh, uh, we are for a pair, for each pair, we are retrieving candidates A space. If uh, the list is not empty, we are checking is, uh, uh, if there is an overlap. If there is uh, uh, no overlap, then the, the outcome will be invalid. If there is an overlap, the, uh, the outcome will be valid, just as rows. So let's see how it's helped. Once again, if Atom System 4 will advertise prefix from its own Atom System number, it will be detected using rows. Now, if uh, it, uh, it will try to add Atom System 1 in the beginning of the S path, it will be detected because Atom System 1 have authorized only Atom System 2 to send its prefixes to upstream providers. It may get, uh, 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 so uh, Auton System 4 may then try to add Auton System 2 to the ice path. Again, it will be detected because Auton System 2 have authori authorized only Auton System 3 to send its prefixes to upstream providers. The last chance is to remove Auton System 4 from the ice path at all. But according to the specification, uh, the router must check that uh, the neighbor auton systems, uh, system number is present in the ice path. Here is the result. User always wins, or at least nearly always. There is still a ch uh, uh, the only opportunity for an attacker is to be your provider. This is uh, the last limitation, but it is uh, very unlikely that a person that, uh, or yeah, a legal entity that you have, uh, that uh, which which you uh, sorry uh, that have a contractual agreement with you will start attacking uh, you and hijacking your address space. I suppose that you will break such contractual agreement uh, in a very <laughs> little time. So, ASP, it's very simple. It works for both hijacks and uh, road leaks. It's uh, for both uh, malicious and mistakes. It doesn't re require any changes in the BGP protocol. It's, uh, uh, the basics is on uh, APK infrastructure that must be slightly updated. And of course, it works only, uh, also at the state of uh, earlier adoption. And here is how the, uh, our security quadrant may look one day. Here is the, our uh, drafts. They are already published and uh, adopted by uh, our CyberOps working group. Um, there is a list of authors that is actively working on these drafts, but this technology will not work without your support because BGP security or insecurity is our joint effort. You should uh, do your part of the work. You should integrate uh, 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 ROS, you should sign it, uh, uh, you should push uh, uh, IRS uh, because uh, IPK infrastructure heavily, heavily relies on IRS infrastructure. And uh, for example, as you all know, Arin is slightly behind in this process at the moment. Uh, here we are. This is a possible future, a, a, a simple one where we may be uh, where BGP routing will be se secured. Uh, it's a, uh, it, it, we are in charge to decide, will it happen or will we will still solve the problems in the mailing list? Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Paweł Karkoszka. I'm from F5 Silverline. Uh, and I have a question about the solution that you proposed here. Uh, is there an uh, option for a 
provider to be also listed as a, a customer as the original origin AS, or do we have to have two RP, RP, PKA entries in a, a, for the, such a situation? Uh, so, are you speaking about sibling relations when uh, both parties are in one region, one is customer of one, uh, one party, in another region, one is customer of another party? Are you speaking about this situation? Yeah, uh, why I'm asking? Uh, because we have uh, a solution that we call uh, route origination. In this situation, what, uh, some of our customers uh, want us to uh, advertise their prefixes as we are the origin IS. For such a situation, do we have to create uh, two database entries for the RPKA, or can we as a, provide, as a listed provider be also a, a, an origin IS in the one entry? Uh, if you are, have a valid, a valid role for, uh, for prefixes that uh, may belong to your customers, you don't need to create a, a, anything except ASP, uh, like for your own address space. So SPA is not per prefix. It's mm -hmm. per uh, autonomous system number. And in your case, it will be work, uh, working from box. Ah, uh, okay. Nothing to worry. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Nimrod Levy, AT&T. Um, I just wanted to first thank you for uh, for pushing this thing, these, uh, these proposals through. This is some very, very good technology to help uh, improve the routing in the internet. And I wanted to make one clarification that there are, in fact, transit providers filtering on ROAs. Yeah, and uh, as far as I remember, AT&T is uh, dropping in wallets already from, at least from peers. That's correct. Yeah, and it's, it's great news, and I hope uh, other T1s will join this party. Yep, and if there are any questions on that uh, that anybody wants to talk about what we've experienced in that regard, I'm happy to have those conversations as well. Yeah. Uh, I just want to highlight one more time. It's important to you to start at least considering uh, uh, using raw origin validation inside your network. There are already several open source implementations. I know at least three uh, from Rive, from Cloudflare, and from NLabs that, that can be used uh, inside your network. <coughs> and you need to understand that uh, ASP will be easily integrated on top of this infrastructure. It's, uh, you're investing one time, and uh, when the uh, ASP will be on fly, you will be, it will be much easier to integrate it. Any other questions? So, thank you very much. Thank you for suffering from my Russian accent, uh, and uh, <laughs> see you around. <laughs>